Well, bud, now it's just you and me. Just two buds, a boat, and a bay. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna go try and do some fishing. Oh, very nice. What kind of fishing? Well, I'm going with Bob and John from Second Star over there, and they're both fly fishermen, so they're going for bonefish and permit. Um, and I guess I'm gonna be going for some other things because I've got my trout tackle here with me and my spinning reel, and I, there's a couple other species that I might be able to catch if I just tag along with them in the flats. So it'll be my first time flats fishing, so that'll be exciting. I'm looking forward to it. Bob, you ready to kill fish? Those fish are toast. <laughs> That's right. rinsing our stuff and uh, you know fresh water is really a rare commodity on Atticus so what we've been doing is I every day at the end of the day I take like our sun shirts or something and clog the scuppers in the cockpit and then we both shower or rinse and then I start rinsing the stuff and by the time you know I'm doing it a little while there's a you know quite a bit of fresh water in the cockpit sole so then I'm able to kind of rinse a lot of the stuff without using any more fresh water we're not cleaning everything per se because the water gets a little bit dirty by the end of it but we're able to get the salt off of all of our equipment and use a minimal amount of salt uh, fresh water so it's the strategy that we're using now okay going snorkeling doing it without our life jackets on so that we could dive down and get good shots but we're not touching the reef we're not destroying it but the rule here in the park is you have to have your life jacket on if you're snorkeling ironically if you're diving obviously you're fine as long as you can you know get a tank and some gear together suddenly you can touch the reef all you want but uh, as long as you're just snorkeling you have to keep your life jacket on so we just had a guy heading for us Desiree saw him we booked it for the dinghy and then put our life jackets on real quick and the guy literally came up and just turned and kept going. So it's just hilarious how far they take this rule that to me doesn't protect the reef all that much at all. I mean sure, if you want these normal tourists to do it, that's one thing. But if you've got boaters that live on the water, that have all their own equipment, I mean that's that's a whole nother level and to force them to 
you know, not dive under the water, even though they've dove under the water all over the world, and they're some of the biggest proponents for saving the reef. You know, I mean, the essentially taking away your ability to experience the reef is not a good way to protect it, in my opinion. Second star heading off into wild blue yonder. Well, bud, now it's just you and me. Just two buds, a boat, and a bay. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's a good one. Thanks. Today we're going to try to explore, we're going to try to get to that lighthouse over there. That one right there. Shots from over there. Mess around the town a little bit. It's not too sunny right now, which is great. So what did you think of cruising with another boat? Um, I've always kind of had issues with compromising in my free time. Um, and so it was a little bit difficult. Um, I think it would have been cool to like meet up with them in the bay here and then like have a couple, like maybe a planned dinner together. Um, and then like a planned gathering of drinks at sunset, something like that. Um, but I actually, I don't know, I guess for me when we're cruising, part of the beauty and like awe is being the only boat, you know, that you can see for miles. So, uh, or at least being anonymous in, in, a, in a bay with other sail, sailboats or... So it was cool traveling with people that we knew because we got to experience a place with them. Um, but I don't. I guess for me personally, I, I I've quite enjoyed just being on Atticus solo. <laughs> All right, welcome to our used clothes warehouse. <laughs> yeah. So sorry about the clutter. Uh, we had a. Uh, squall come through last night and so we had all of our snorkel and our clothes drying on deck and we had to bring it inside but this system works pretty well to get them drying as long as we don't need this space but come on over here because I want to show you guys um, right now we are um, receiving weather facts from uh, with, with this little SSB receiver here. It's really hit or miss when, you know, whether or not we get a good image or not. I'd say maybe 50% of the time we get a readable image. Um, but it's been better out here because there's just no other boats and not as much interference. But if you take a close look, so you can see um, it's slowly loading this image and it literally just loads one line of pixels at a time. Um, you can see this is the southern United States, there's Florida, um, and this is, looks like it's a pressure uh, map of the surface pressure. Um, and once that completely fills out, it sends a tone that says that this image is, is done and it'll automatically save. And let me just show you, for instance, one of the um, wind images. So yeah, this is a good example of the end result of an image. So this is all wind forecasts and wave uh, height forecasts. Um, so, you know, this sort of image is super helpful for planning when we're going to head back to Isla Mujeres, even though we're totally, you know, outside of civilization and away from 
internet and any other way of receiving weather. Uh, so yeah, it's working really well. It's not dependable, so you gotta stick with it. You, you gotta like wake up every morning and try to receive the, the facts or else you might go days without getting any weather information if you miss that one good day where you know you're receiving the images perfectly. So we're we're loving it though. I mean it's a it's a really cheap way to receive weather information from pretty much anywhere. Dock leading into Punta Allen. Oh, cool. Here's some sketchy uh, dock here. <laughs> All these boats, most of them seem to be like uh, eco tour boats, so they take tourists out to check out dolphins and turtles and stuff like that. It seems like it's a big business here. We found holes in these walls. We like what we saw Seems so strong until it falls The fire must fall Sort of like expedition truck it just carries tourists into Punta Allen and it's just a huge heavy-duty truck because I guess the getting here can be kind of a long journey by road so this town is really kind of off the beaten path and hard to access by road a lot easier by boat I assume so it's kind of cool that we get to easily see places like that mm -hmm. what were you just saying um, well, first of all, we're just saying how cool a lot of the churches in Mexico are because they don't, a lot of them don't have air conditioning, so they're just kind of designed to be really open. Cool, nice view. a couple restaurants and like little beach clubs already and it's really interesting coming from Isla Mujeres, Cancun, even small towns like Coba, places that have had tourism for a long time, um, you get hassled a lot like the people working at the restaurants will keep you know come on in here we've got this we've got that and they won't lay up until you're literally out of earshot. <laughs> Isla Mujeres is probably the worst walking down um, Hidalgo Street where there's all the stalls and little stores and restaurants like you're just hassled all the way down that street but here like you pass a restaurant and the people are just kind of smile and look at you as you walk by it's a stark contrast to a lot of the other towns in Mexico and it must be because tourism is probably really new to Punta Allen um, in a, most of the descriptions I've read about this town, there was hardly any tourist industry here, so it must have sprouted in the last couple years. All right, so we just stumbled upon a uh, stack or a pile of lobster traps. Um, and it's funny, coming from Key West, a lot of those lobster yards were just full with stacks of thousands of wooden and plastic lobster traps but here they do them a little bit differently they make these concrete slabs with sides and this is the back of one so it's like almost goes down to the bottom and then over here you can see this is the front where there's nothing on the side whatsoever and all they do is they put these all over the place in the bay on the sea floor and then periodically they'll come by pick up one end of the trap and uh, the lobsters will just be hanging out in there and then they'll s gauge the, uh, the bigger ones, what sizes they want to collect and then they'll, uh, they'll kind of spear them, I guess. And that way they're able to um, have a really uh, small number of lobsters dying that are undersized every year. They're able to 
see what sizes they want, gauge how big they are, and then harvest them. And so I guess they're really successful with that strategy here. It must be the garbage pickup. So you can see there's a truck on that dock with a bunch of provisions that a boat had just brought and then they're gonna load the truck with the provisions. And it just goes to show you how much easier it is to access Punta Allen by boat than by road because the roads are just really bad coming in here. Well, if you're into camping, a couple campsites. Punta Allen is so interesting because it's this beautiful, beautiful fishing village, tropical fishing village that's just starting to like start to make some serious money from tourism. So it's just kind of cool to see a place that's so like early on in its development, I guess, and it's just so beautiful. Um, probably a lot like what East Mujeres was like, you know, 15, 20 years ago. So listen, there's tons of birds around here and their, their songs are really, really beautiful. Oh, oh I want to stop. Oh gosh, I can't stop because there are mosquitoes everywhere. Oh, ah. There are like hundreds of mosquitoes around us right now. This is getting crazy. Like all of a sudden, we just had, we're surrounded by them. And we tried to put some mosquito repellent on, but the moment that we would stop walking, we would just get destroyed. Hopefully. Someone's here. We could get it to the lighthouse. <laughs> Well, we just found out that it's private property to enter that lighthouse, so I kind of wish we would have, in our cruising guide, it said you could try to convince a Navy officer to take you up there. I guess I didn't think about asking in town. So, we got here and there's no one here. Oh, it's too bad. So, I'm gonna try to call out a little bit in case there's someone on duty. Otherwise, I guess we won't go it, up there. Yeah, and especially because it does say that we will get arrested yeah. so that's that's, a, that's the you know level we don't want to go to <laughs> man okay so we failed with the lighthouse um and now we are just trying to find a place to get some lunch and it is uh 1 30 in the afternoon it is super freaking hot super super hot and most of the restaurants are closed so i'm not sure how it's gonna go down but yeah i think the way that it works is most of the restaurants have like a contract with the uh fishing boats that go in and out so you buy a tour for the day which includes lunch so we're kind of having a hard time finding a place that will serve us but the other night we came here with our friends found a little place called fisherman's lodge around the corner and they were open at 8 p.m so and they were the only place in town open we walked around all over <laughs> Punta Allen. So we're hoping that'll be open. We'll get some some noms. So how did we find it? Um, we ended up coming to the place that we found the other night, um, but there's some kind of tour here, so we just um, piggybacked onto their buffet. So I got a whole plate of salad because <laughs> um, our refrigerator's too small to have enough salad for you know ten days. So I'm just gorging on greens right now. <laughs> it's really good. Jordan found some friends. Yeah, I didn't find them. <laughs> His came out of nowhere. Boat, buddy? I think he does. Yeah. 
Aww. Aww, yes, <laughs> take me with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were dancing on fire. <sighs> All right. Oh. Oh, that's good.